Alrighty, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Um, I'm actually really happy because I got a new capture card. It's another external capture card. But supposedly, like, everyone was like, oh, there's like basically no lag. It's pretty much instant. I mean, one person was like, um, there's still a 5 to 10, 10 frame delay. And I'm like, 5 to 10 frames? That's nothing. So I got the capture card. And I tried it out a little before I started stream. From what I see from recording, it's pretty much instant. But I don't know how it's going to be like during stream, so let's do this. Yeah, because, oh my gosh, yeah. My old capture card, if I pushed something, it would take like a second for it to appear on my streamlabs and my TV. Like, so if I reacted to anything on TV, it would be like one second. That would be one second ahead of what everyone would see. But now it's pretty much instant. Okay, so I'm gonna read off the TV just to see if it's like for real, for real. All right, then let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Sholm's quite brilliant deductions. And discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. We can do that. I mean, I could just like read off of here and I can listen. I'm sure we'll, ar we'll arrive at what Mr. Sholm's meant to say in the first place. Oops. Yeah, cuz... My gosh, like... Yeah, one bad thing about the new capture card though, it has a in for, um... Um, or, uh, audio jack, auxiliary, but it doesn't have an out, so I can't plug my headphones into my capture card, so I have to listen to the TV sound, but because it's pretty much instant what I hear on my TV and what gets recorded in stream, like, I don't think there's going to be an echo or, or any kind of delay, so I think this should be fine. Anyways, today's will be a test. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows, for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Herlock Sholmes's logic and reasoning spect- oh, I forgot, he has an English accent. Spectacular. Act 1. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Cause of death, poisoning from soap ingestion. Mm -hmm. I think it's poisoning from poison ingestion. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Firm at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of a sizable bar of soap. Meaningful? Indubitably. Why is this soap set so purposely on, upon the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact. Yes, wait, why am I doing this again? I aren't, aren't I supposed to deduce? Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Okay, now we deduce. Of course, the fork. Uh, well, I can't deny that the fork implies the man was eating something, or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. Oh, now I know what's off about my... My camera is a little too high. I was like, I didn't fix something before stream started. Uh, it is too... Yeah, that, that's good. Okay, now I don't have to like sit up as tall. Whew! Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork than to attempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half of the bar of soap is left on the plate. But might there not be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really ate some soap. Uh... Oh yes, now it's instant! Ooh! Wait. I don't want you to pop up, I want... Ah! I can shoes. Do I have to examine the teacup? Do you think he was drinking tea with the soap? The cup's empty, so there's no way of knowing. Ah, how about this for an idea? Perhaps the cup was full of water. And he was dissolving soap in it so he could gulp as much as down as possible? Please remember that he may not actually have been the soap lover that he's made out to be. When is it this? I can't examine that stain. I can't turn the camera to the right anymore. Let us really examine the fork. I suppose you eat soap with a fork, would you? I 
don't think it's a question of which implement you'd use, you shouldn't eat so full stop. But then why? Why does a man have a fork in his hands? Oh dear, I understand your frustration, Mr. Narukuro, but please don't take it out on me. The point is, if we decide the man used this fork to eat the soap, we wouldn't be changing Mr. Sholmes' deduction. But we really ought to consider some other clues. Oh, the soap's not reacting. Nothing's real. Work. We really. Oh, another other piece of soap. He didn't eat it at all. Look, there's more soap on the floor here. Mr. Shamspear must have must really have loved the stuff. Let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Naruhodo. Look closely at the soap. Do you see that it would fit together perfectly with the half bar on the table? What the? How can that be? I think that they are two halves of the same bar that broke apart. So we present that. Oh, okay, so I could have gone more to the left. What we need is right here. Present. Oops. Other piece of soap. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the other piece of soap reveals the answer. It being the other half of the soap on the table, in short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could drive any man to attempt to eat soap. Did you eat wax? Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! The week is almost over! But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Naruhuro, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plates. Mr. Sholmes is still pushing the soap argument then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather than ate it. Yes, um. If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? Like a teacup. Yes, a western vessel for the serving of infusions of dry tea leaves. It's a teacup, Mr. Nadohoro, as you well know. Not putting on airs. And it's empty. Ooh, excuse me. Ah, so we've already established that the victim wasn't eating soap when he died. However, there's significant evidence to suggest that he was drinking tea. My thoughts exactly. I love this new capture card. Ah, oh, it's so instant. It's so fast. Did something pop up? What is this? That's nothing. I want to examine the stain on the table, but they won't let me. It has to be something else. New tech? Yeah, I got a new um, external capture card. I looked up best capture card um, with no lag. And the best external one was an Elgato... something 60? And yeah, people were like, oh, it's pretty much instant, there's no delay, and someone was like, yeah, there's a 10 frame delay, I'm like, who cares? But I got it, and it's instant, and I love it. So like, technically I could just be looking at my TV screen, because it's a lot bigger. Should I examine the fork again? The victim didn't eat the soap, then what did he eat? It's a real mystery, isn't it? Ah, oh, I've got it. He wasn't interested in eating soap at all, it's this fork he wanted to satisfy his hunger with. Mr. Naruhodo, I really don't think it's helpful to continue with this line of reasoning that the gentleman had peculiar tastes. Susan has a, such a gentle way with words, but I know when I've been told off. So, like, no delay, right? And it, I just read everything instantly? Love it. Not the contents of the plates. I can't move my camera up or down. The only way I can move is left or right. Examine the teacup. It's not the contents of the plate because that's what we're refuting. Not the soap. Well, what could there be? Can't go left anymore. Unless I do examine contents of the plate? Contents of the plate is just soap again, isn't it? Well, you know there's a saying in Japanese, don't you? If your food is poisoned, you might as well eat it, plate and all. 
Well, there's an Im image. All I can picture now is the victim first taking a bite of soap and then the plate. The soap like some tofu and the plate like a giant rice cracker. Oh dear, that sounds like a very bland combination. Where could the poison have been? This is really... Hmm. Not his shoe. Like, now the camera view is just on the table, so it's not even anything on the floor. Like, it's not something in his hat. Not the fork, we examined that. We examined everything! I want to examine that stain on the table. Can't. What could it be? Mm. Glad you're happy. Thank you. And hopefully I could write this off on my taxes. <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't as... I mean, it was pretty pricey, but it wasn't as expensive as I thought it would be. So, I'm glad. Onto the plate. Okay, sorry. I need a walkthrough. Because, what the heck? Investigation. Not the other. Victim was. Ugh. Teacup. <clears throat> On state, but I examined the teacup. Or should I just present this? Yes! Okay, so it was teacup. Oh, whatever. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been the vessel for choice for practicing poisons over the centuries. It would appear that this victim drank every last drop. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. Which leads us to the immutable, immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingested poison contained in this teacup. Poison in the tea. No possible perpetrator presence. But if someone brewed him the tea or sold him the tea. The cause of death identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that the death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? The single teacup suggests the answer. Ah, the western vessel for infused hot drinks again. Yes, we can imagine that shortly before his death, Mrs. Shamspear was having a drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that. But what troubles me is Mr. Nasima's reaction when he heard Mr. Sholmes suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for more clues. Um. Oh, there's another teacup! He was with someone. Did the man die and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, there were two teacups in this room all along. Ah! In other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. At the very least, we can say now with certainty that somebody else was here in this room last night, making tea with the victim. What are you talking about? <laughs> Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Do you mean to say you know who exactly was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. <coughs> I'm not sure I like where the seduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the halcyon days of eating too much soap. But the identity of the guest who was here last night when the victim passed away is... 
is something I have a very bad feeling about. We can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Naruhodo. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. Let's see. What can we examine? The candle? I don't think that's important. Oh. Can't do the glasses. Books? Ow. At first glance, it seems that the only things in this room are the makeshift stage and the costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see. The titles read... A picture of Monsieur Le Coq, Canterbury Yearnings, and... A meal for Gaborio? Wait. I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but... They're the exact same three books that Mr. Dotsmith purchased the other day. What's it? Yes, on the day of the unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed. Sosaki-san had just been to a bookstop, bookshop and bought them, that's right. And now those three titles are here in the room of the victim. Yet Mr. Natsume claims never to have been here before. No, he says he's... Oh yeah, he's never been here. Wait, what does that mean, you think? I really don't know what to make of it. I love familiar books. Uh, let's check the empty bottle too. It's empty. Empty of liquid, but full of air. That makes you think, doesn't it? It makes me think that you're full of hot air. We should be thinking about who else was in the room at the time. Father, Susan-san's quip in response was cleverer than my original ridder, riddle. No, because then that's what he drank to die. I would like to think Shoulders is purposely getting it wrong to see if you figure it out like a detective prodigy. Hmm. May maybe? Just to see if we're worthy of like solving a crime or like taking on a case, maybe? Or he could just be this dumb. I will say... This pile of books. Is that right? <laughs> Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the pi pile of familiar books. Quite so. It's no mere coincidence that these three titles are here in this room. It's the link to the truth. Oh! Mr. Natsume, you purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. That's just a coincidence. In that case, you'll be able to bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment. No, never, non-negotiable. Can't bring your own copies here. It proves that these three books are in fact yours. Mm. Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could only have brought these three books here to the victim's room. <laughs> Why is he dancing like that? Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trials concluded at the Old Bailey. I like the way they like set up the movement though, and then when the snap hit, it's just like, oh, he's dead now. That was cool. Uh, mm, uh, uh. In short, there is only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in his room last night as a result of poisoning. He's quite patient while you deduce. Mm -hmm. And that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor... ...was you. Mr. Soseki Natsume. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' great deduction. Soseki Natsume at the scene. Dude, how do you always get yourself into these terrible situations? Deduction complete. Elementary. My dear Watson. Not again! Not again! Not again! 
Not again! Well then, Mr. Natsume. It appear you're gonna have to accompany me down to the yard. Again. But, 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 but wait! Hold your horses! Yes? It's mayonnaise an instrument. Ew, no! I mean, I guess anything could be an instrument because technically you could tap out a beat on it. Or like, make, like, make sounds, noises, pitches. Like if you take a glop of mayonnaise and just splat it down and it makes a tone, a noise. But I'm gonna say no. Also, happy Thursday, Golden. I hope you've been having a good week. Door, key, locked, entry, exit, entirely impossible. He's so flustered, he's being even stranger than normal. He related to a lot of heart. Oh my gosh. Is he Lotta Hart's ancestor? Holy crap. It's crazy cold here? Yeah, I heard in the um, northeast it's supposed to snow a crazy ton this weekend. Oh my gosh, stay warm, dude. I do not envy you. Currently it's 29 degrees, but last night... Last night it was 15? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's why I left. <laughs> like, weather... What's the weather here right now? 57 here. I am wearing a t-shirt. I I went to go pick up dinner in a t-shirt. And it was so nice and warm. I'm sorry, it seems like I'm shoving it in your face, but I'm just so happy about warm weather. Although it's supposed to drop in temperature again here because the Santa Ana winds will be gone after this weekend. But I'm still happy. I reckon it could be. Oh my gosh, he could be. What? Well, you think that's an alibi? You could have just made a copy. What? Live in the same building after all. You've had plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. B -b 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 what? Misery me! We're supposed to be getting maybe six to eight inches of snow this weekend. Ah. Uh, I guess it's le a little less than New York. In Boston, it's supposed to be like 18 inches. So I hear. Sorry, sir. You'll get your chance to give your side of the story later. The facts speak for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Arr, you, you horrible Sherlock Holmes! He really has found himself in an arch rival now, hasn't he? The weather people are always wrong, so you never know. Yeah, true, 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 true. Come now, no dilly dallying. Outside, this carriage waiting. Welcome, student Naruharu Esquire. I... I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me! Please! Please! I'm innocent! Alright, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk about it. One more thing. Oh, yes? My... my poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me! Oh, uh, Wakahai! I remember the cat. And so... His evil curse still apparently unbroken. Oseki-san found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you. Did I say that out loud, or... Was that in my head? That was weird. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right. And, of course. What? Have you forgotten what the Inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Garadub, who discovered Mr. Shamspear. Ah, oh, Mr. John Garadub, yes. I expect we could find him in his sitting room on the top floor as usual. Right, we must remember to go and talk to him later then. But for now, we examine! Oh my gosh, I love this new capture card. I'm either gonna have to throw my, my, my old one or maybe give it away? But I don't know who'd want a five-year-old capture card. I guess if you're not streaming and just want to record things on the computer, it, it would be nice to have. 
And here we have another disproportionately large machine. This looks like a meter of some kind. Ah, this is a gas meter, I think. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use it with coins. Ah, I see. Yes, now that you've pointed it out. I see that there's a slot just here that looks like it would take a coin. What do you mean, if you put a coin in here? That's right. That would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So, if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you were a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. That is a miserable way to live. Let's examine the body. Oh, the poor man. So young to die. How old was he? You suppose it was a very painful death being poisoned as he was. How old was he? He was 31. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he was young. I don't know. All we can do now is hope that he'll be reborn to a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder... You think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? I made sure I had a reference at the ready for just an... for such an occasion as this, actually. The book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed, the British Way. I'll just reread it now. One moment. Is this important to the case? There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? Okay, it wasn't important. Um... Costumes? Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room, with its grim shady going on. This one looks like a king's attire. King? I've always dreamt of being a king. Oh, I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord. A daimyo or such like. With a chomage top knot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a chomage. Oh, you look wonderful with one, and you already have the sword. Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a chomage and a sword? It's like cute dialogue, but is it like important to the case? Mm. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just a wine glass and a bottle. And both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? What's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zeeks? Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste and that he should donate um, to the needy. <laughs> it's just the next time we meet. So, what does this have to do with the Olive Green? The lady that accidentally got stabbed? How, how does she relate to this? As we seem to the outside, the window is completely bricked up. A vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in a property? It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think the poor of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an unaffordable tax. Oh. What is it, Mrs. Soto? You look closely. A number of the bricks are loose. Oh, so this is important. Soap! Why? Oh yes, it looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just here. Was it Mr. Shamsby who did it, I wonder, being the lodger renting this room? Ah, oh, look at this, Mr. Nadhodo. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What, outside? Do I have to investigate it again? <clears throat> so cold outside, you can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. But more importantly, what is it on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are the bars of soap doing lined up on the ledge outside the window? I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather charming like that. Still, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined, out, lined up outside the window. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. Oh dear. I... I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at the soap. Ah. Oh. Do you see in the middle there? There's a patch that's a different color. It's sort of transparent, but... What a fancy design, I suppose. Only in Great Britain. It looks like the Hinomaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful. 
It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this ramshackle old room? The bar of soap has been entered into the court record. Cheap bar of soap that was discovered just as a misery. No, I think some the thing in the middle is like poison or something important. Let's examine it. Oh, I love the instant feedback. It's so good. This part is a different color. It's an exquisite design, isn't it? Trust the British to turn a boring bar of soap into something special. I quite like it. It reminds me of the Hinamato design of- yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect this is rather expensive soap. That doesn't seem likely, given who it belongs to. Can I make my screen larger? I can make it larger! Oh my gosh! Larger? I can't make my mini feed larger. Oh man, I love this bigger screen though. It makes stuff easier to read. Okay, now, uh, lamp. This is a gas wall light, isn't it? It must be connected to a gas pipe on the wall. Gas lights, gas stove. London really is a city of gas. And now that I think about it, Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Garadub have an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's so much cozier. Insert gas lighting joke here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I saw, um... I saw an SNL skit where they were like, oh, it's cinema classics, and they were, they were talking about gaslight. It's like, oh, but the gas, it's getting dimmer. And he's like, no, you're crazy. But that's such, like... Like, I read the synopsis for the movie, and it's pretty interesting. Like, wow, that was such, like, a crazy twist. And so, like, creative and original and unique. Like, hey, you're going crazy, but no, it's just because he was trying to steal your jewels. We need more, like, original um, movies these days. I still need to watch Dune. I, I don't think it's in theaters anymore, though, but I really wanted to watch Dune. I wanted to watch Last Night in Soho. And I need to watch Kingsman. Oh, uh, I don't even know if that's still in theaters anymore. I don't know how long movies stay in movie theaters anymore. But I definitely need to watch those. What a twist! <laughs> this is some sort of makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though? What a nightly Shakespeare performances. Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Nanohodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? Then you could practice your art every single day. I'll think about it. If you promise to don a beard and play the role of the judge. Well, if... if that would help achieve your goal. This I have to see. I miss looking in the newspaper for a movie theater schedules. Ah. How did we figure out movie theater schedules? Yeah, how did we do it before internet? Was it newspaper? I don't remember. Dang. Remember when movie theater tickets used to be $6? I would call? Wow. I just remember we'd be like, hmm, no, but we had to know the time, otherwise why... Otherwise why would we go to the theater? I think all we needed was the soap. No, wait. Is there anything else? We got Newsday or New York Times or something and we would look there. Oh yeah, definitely, I had New Newsday. New York, Long Island! Okay, I'm moving. There's nothing else here. New location has been added. Oh, we have to go to Garadub. That's what we have to do. Whoa, he got a fancy screen. Actually, it looks like this whole place got tidied up. Here we are again, the eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Garadub's the one who discovered the incident this morning, don't forget. Oh, you chops, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation in court yesterday. 
was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadev as anyone, really. Came straight back here after all that business at the Bailey yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up to more bally nonsense this morning. I wonder, you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadev? Yes, I suppose you'd like to know all about that. That dead loss of an actor chap in the ground floor room. What was the last movie you guys and gals went to see? In theaters? Mm. Mm. I didn't watch a movie yet. I think mine is probably Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, Spider-Man was so good. So good. Spider-Man No Way Home with friends a couple days ago loved it. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> sorry. Sorry for... It was the second time I saw it. Oh, I've been meaning to go watch it again because it was so good. I went with my friends and we went on a... Um, we went on a Friday night, but the theater was like pretty empty. That was probably because it was the weekend after it came out. But like... Uh, oh man, I don't want to say spoilery stuff, but... Okay, when when the brick came through the window and and Matt Murdock caught it, I was just like <gasps> ah! When when he showed up on screen, I was just like, oh my gosh! Me and my friends were the loudest people freaking out. And no one else was like yelling about it. They're just like, huh? And I was like, dude, it's Daredevil! I saw it the day after it came out and the theater was packed this past Tuesday when my friend saw it. It was just us in the theater. I popped for Daredevil. I know, right? We flipped out. Like, when we heard the voice, I was like, wait a minute. And then we, we saw the, the stick and we were like, wait a minute. And then it showed his face and I was like, oh my gosh. Yes, it's Matt Murdock. Which means, which means they might continue the Daredevil series for TV. Which I was hoping that they would do because Daredevil is great. And then maybe they could, you know, kind of reboot the the um, Netflix Marvel series. So Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and um, Iron Fist. They really need to revamp Iron Fist because... The way they wrote Danny Rand, the fight choreography, it was just not, not up to par. It was just not good. Never had Netflix, so I never saw the Daredevil show, but I heard nothing but great things. If there are shows you have to watch for from the Netflix series, I would definitely watch Daredevil. Um, I'd say seasons one and two. Number three, um, I don't really remember what happened, so it must not have been that great. But seasons one and two, great. And Jessica Jones. Because Jessica Jones felt like it didn't feel too superhero-y, it didn't feel too comic book-y, but it, it, it felt like a real, like, gritty, um, like, drama mystery series. And the first season was creepy. And I was just like, I want to watch it again, but I kind of don't want to watch it again, because it, it's, it's too real. Ooh. But it's good. And I would like to see Kristen Ritter again as Jessica Jones, like, because she doesn't really want to be a hero, and she's just like, I just want to live out my days in just quiet, peace, and solitude. Everyone stop bothering me. I think she's great. But yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping we see more of Daredevil. <laughs> Maybe Punisher? Mm? Oh yeah, Punisher was also good too. So, we we'll, would we'll watch Punisher also. Yeah, Luke Cage, the first half of season one, fan freaking tastic. And then it sadly, like, mm. and then I think the same thing happened for the second season too. Like, the beginning of it, like, the first couple of episodes are just like, yes! And then it's just like, mm. is he the long lost brother of Johnny Cage? Ha 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 ha. Um. Maybe, but most likely not. But yeah, Luke Cage is good. And then Iron Fist, just don't, don't do Iron Fist, sadly. 
Uh, it was so bad. Yeah. Oh man. And then, and then you know, in the other parts of the movie later on, when you know you see certain other people, we were, me and my friends were flipping out, and we're just like, oh my gosh! and everyone else was just like, eh. And I'm like, how are you not freaking out about this? I mean, like, like I mean, people had some expectations, but it was just like. It's happening! Speaking of potentially unpopular opinion, I love the 2021 Mortal Kombat movie. It was good! I thought the 2021 Mortal Kombat movie, like, had good fights. And, like, um, it felt like the first Mortal Kombat movie that came out was just like, yeah, you gotta fight in this tournament. Although, I didn't really like the main character's, um, power. Yeah, it, it was just like, mm, that doesn't look cool. You could have fixed the design a little. Despicable Me 3 was my last movie in theaters? Wow. When did it come out? Look it up. Despicable Me 3. That was in 2017. <gasps> you haven't been to a theater since? Oh my gosh. I was holding back from crying when the OG showed up. And it was so cute, like, no, you're amazing. Hey, listen to me. You're amazing. And I was just like, <laughs> so good. So good. That movie, right, when it comes out on Blu-ray, when does it come out on Blu-ray? Spider-Man, no way home Blu-ray. Uh. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? March. Estimated release date. Yeah, pre-order, but when does it come out? But yeah, I definitely gotta... Gotta get that. Probably won't get, like, any of the other Spider-Man movies on DVD. Because I'm not, like, obsessed with them, but I am obsessed with this one. Yeah, I'm buying the Blu-ray ASAP. I just need to know when it comes out. Uh, Blu-ray.com. Um, where? When do you come out? When do you come out? Um, that's the theater release date. But when is the Blu-ray release date? Hmm. Hmm. They say supposedly March 1st. Oh no, wait. Digital HD from Amazon Video and iTunes March 1st. But the DVD and Blu-ray released sometime in March. Okay. But not much more to wait. That's like two months. Ah, oh, Exciting. Wants to play another Spider-Man game, PS4? I've never played a Spider-Man game. March 1st is my birthday, they know. Ah, that's awesome! Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I've been meaning to rewatch Daredevil again because of that movie. I'm just like, oh, I gotta remember how awesome he was. He was, ah, oh, man. What if they team up again? Oh, no, not again. What if they actually team up? That would be so. Yeah. What if he becomes? <clears throat> what if he <it> becomes? <clears throat> oh, my throat. Sorry. Excuse me. <clears throat> what if he becomes Peter Parker's? next mentor, like, dad figure. Because, you know, Tony Stark is gone. But, you know, Matt Murdock is in New York. He could work- Oh, no, wait, but because that thing happens, maybe he's not any- Oh man, but that would still be cool. That would still be cool if Matt Murdock becomes the next father figure mentor. Ah, <sighs> that would be awesome! <laughs> Peter needs a new parental figure, plus he's a good lawyer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and like, because, because Matt Murdock is, you know, he doesn't have any, like, other, um, like, physical things other than he can see, like, see, even though he's blind. He doesn't have super strength. He can't fly. Oops. So, like, he can really tell Peter to be like, hey, be careful, there are real consequences you have to know your limits 
And maybe he could also teach him, like, fighting. Well, Peter kind of, like, already fights on his own because of his spider senses. But, I don't know, maybe Daredevil could teach him, like, more stuff like, hey, here's how you look out for people or, like, follow their trail or, you know, this is how you blend in to, like, follow your targets or, I don't know, just, like, just stuff like that. Like, Tony Stark gave him the tech, but Matt Murdock could give him, like, skill. You know what I'm trying to say? So, I think that would be a really cool team up. I would love to see that happen. Ah! I need to watch that movie again. I need to move on with the scene. <laughs> Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? I need to watch Dune! Okay, now I can converse. I don't think I have to examine anything in here. Must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. Ah, oh, well, that hope is after chap rises at 5 o'clock sharp every morning without fail. But at 5.30 this morning, he still hadn't lit the gas. So I went down and knocked on his door, but no bally answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door. Well, I called on that rum-looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? The man could have just overslept by half an hour. It's very true, Mr. Nadohoro. If 30 minutes oversleeping was warranted such behavior... I'd have to kick your door down every morning. Well, um, you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that. It's just me, or is he avoiding our gaze now all of a sudden? He wanted the dude's money! Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found on the far side of the door. Maybe a plot where Peter loses his vision for a time and is helped by Daredevil? Oh. My. Oh. Smooth. You are blowing my mind. Smooth. Oh my. Oh my. Yes. Oh my gosh. And it's, what if it happens when he's out, like, patrolling the city? And then, like, Daredevil happens to find him because he's like, Oh shoot, someone's in trouble. And, and like, he feels bad for the kid because he knows what it feels like to lose your sight all of a sudden. <gasps> Smooth! I gotta, I gotta write that down. I gotta remember it. I gotta remember it. Oh. <laughs> okay, I wrote it down. <laughs> I just think it would be so cool! I want to see more Daredevil! Mr. Shamspear. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe. Is that right? Yes, William Shamspear. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute? Well, let's face it. The only redeeming feature of that room is a cheap rent. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has a bally screw loose. So hard to choose which category soseki san would fall into. Mr. Naruhodo, that's a little rude. He was doing research as well. Research? Into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare. I read a few plays with the old barn myself, you know. Romeo and Hamlet and all that. Romeo and Juliet. Yes, William Shakespeare is English, England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sao in Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. Oh no, seeing Sao just reminds me of Sword Art Online, and I'm just like, Bleh. I don't like Sword Art Online. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shamsbury would have had much in common. Shakespeare interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Naruhodo, really, how rude. What about dot hack? Okay. Dot hack. I like the fact that they weren't too much about like, oh, this is a video game. But it was more of a space for people to um, escape to. 
I mean, they did do video game stuff like, oh man, we gotta like defeat these viruses and like, you know, beat up these things. But um, I feel like Dot Hack was a little too... Mm, a little too slow paced. I feel like, I mean, I feel like a lot of kids watched it because like Toonami, like American uh, stations were like, oh, it's about a virtual reality game or like an online MMO. Then kids should watch it, but I, um, I don't know. I feel like adults would have appreciated it more. Like, uh, I, I, it's just like in the middle for me. It was a good experience. Like, it was okay to watch. Would I watch it again? Maybe not. But did I hate it? No. I, I like it better than Sword Art. Probably because, like, the characters in Dot Hack also, like, felt like real people, but Sword Art is just like, hey, everyone, everyone that's a girl, just immediately fall in love with this totally average guy who doesn't really do anything, but for some reason you just fall in love with him. And I was like, why? It's so stupid. Ugh, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. It's been so long, can't remember specifics, need to rewatch Dot Hack. The only thing I clearly, clearly remember is the one episode where they're like, Oh my gosh, this character's the strongest character ever. Like, they have all the, like, rare treasures from all these dungeons. They have, like, the strongest weapons and the best gear. And they're like, how do they do it? And it turns out it was just three girls taking turns playing on the character, so, like, they never logged off. And it's just like, okay, I have this shift, I have this shift, I have this shift. And, and it's just like, that's it? That's the secret behind the strongest character in the game. It's like, oh wow. Big deal. I don't know why that's the episode I remember clearly, but eh. After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well, now. Must have been about six of the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily, as I remember, and it was completely dark already. That failed actor chap was out at the time. Mr. Garadam noticed there was no light from his room or something, I suppose. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was after eight before Sham Spirit got back. And the chap was up until past one in the morning, I'll have you know. Thirty met his end sometime after that. He's asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark there. Well, thank you. That was very illuminating. Is everything all right, Mrs. Sato? Well, I was just thinking it's a little strange, that's all. Mr. Garadev, you were up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs, not with this blasted leg. Then... How is it that you seem to know? Precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. Oh! <laughs> that's a very good point. Can't imagine that you could hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants, is that it? I say, I know what you're thinking and it's a badly outrage. I'm ex-military, don't you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants, why would I? Then how did you know, Mr. Garadeb? It's the gas, woman! That gas tells me everything! The, the gas? Speaking gas? What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is supplied to the building by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less work that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that, too. Let me see if I can explain. Let's say I was to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly, but at the same time, the lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? They dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that are connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. 
Jolly good point. Fact is, the gas company's pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long run out. I barely got any gas under to start with. Opposites also true, of course. Extinguish the lamps up here, and they glow brighter in the rest of the house. Ah, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room... Sorry about that. Uh, so by watching the flicker in the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. You've got it. Oh, of course, because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps with fires. Clever. In point of fact, the room on the ground floor and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. I watch the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh. That's fascinating, Mr. Garda. Absolutely fascinating. Oh, well, nothing to it, really. And I can't really see that it's going to help us with the case, either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Garda was so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Okay. I think we're just about done here. The road? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna examine the sill. Nope. Little up. There we go. With the exception of the top floor, where Mr. and Mrs. Garrett would, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on the number of windows a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poor members of society filled in many of their windows. But the tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So those windows could all, all be opened up again, surely. Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay to have to work done. Yes, that is a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have, had, who have to live all cooped up in a windowless room. I suppose that's the price you pay for living in a very cheap accommodation. It all seems rather pointless when you put it like that. I wanted to examine the soap, but okay. There always seems to be a bicycle outside the Garadab residence. I read that bicycles are extremely popular all over Great Britain at the moment, in fact. That one seems very warped, though, especially the front wheel. Is that to make it more of a challenge to ride, you think? No, I'm afraid that may be a result of the rider's incompetence. For the front wheel to be so badly warped, I'm afraid the rider may have been similarly afflicted. Blah, blah, I can read. And there's a good chance Mr. Natsume has been practicing on this bicycle, I think. Oh dear, I fear you may be right. Okay, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna go back. Nope, 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 nope. Hmm. Do I move again? Oh yeah, back. Oof. I'm gonna go back to the Garadab's room. I feel like there's something I have to inspect. Maybe like the lamp or something. Okay, or not. I feel like that's just gonna talk about the military. Uh... Actually, let's talk about the screen. We know what the screen is hiding now. The aftermath of the fiery altercation of the other day. Hmm. Don't suppose I'll be able to clear that mess up for some time now? <clears throat> oh dear. It's must be a very difficult situation for you. I'll say. People talk about twists of fate and whatnot. But this is a twist and a half. A rotten show all around. He's clearly struggling with everything that's happened. I feel like I mix up Garadab's accent the most. I don't know what voice I want to give him. Okay. I can't examine the fireplace, so I guess I'm done here. Oh no, I don't want to. I want to move. Um. Actually, can I present something to you? Hmm. What do you think of this though? What do you think of this bar soap? Mr. Garadab, could I show you this? 
been quite a couple of days, as you can imagine. I'm afraid I'm rather tired. I haven't really got the energy in the old eyeballs, to be honest with you. Some other time then. Okay, so he doesn't know anything about the soap. Okay. Um, is there anything else I can examine on Briar Road? Although, no, the date did come up, so I'm sure there's something I can examine. Why has somebody built a snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? That's not a pedestal, Mr. Nadahodo. That's a part of the snowman's body. Really? But it already has a perfectly good body. Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made with two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. And now we're looking at him as if he's strange. Poor man, I know how he feels. If anything, it's Japanese and British two ball snowmen that are the strange ones, isn't it? After all, real people do have three sections. Head, torso, and legs. You ever think that perhaps you think about things too much? Okay, I guess that's it. So let's move to prison. Okay, I'm not ready for this. So there was something I had to do in... Um, do I have to examine in Miss Green? No, oh, I examined everything for Miss Green. No, I didn't examine this cabinet. Lots of bottles in that cabinet, aren't there? Do you think it's safe to keep them like that? If you were a patient here, I'd fear I'd feel sure you'd take some medicine by mistake when you're half asleep. That is a worry, but at least the cabinet has a lock, even if it's only a flimsy looking one. Oh, I've no doubt you'd manage to unlock that somehow while you were half asleep as well. There are limits to even what I can do when I'm half asleep, you know, Mr. Soto. Hey Rico, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! <coughs> We've been having a good week. Oh, what if I present the profiles to Mr. Garadub? Um... Oh, no, wait, I can't. Never mind. Um... What do I... Do I really have to examine your room? I fell asleep and just woke up. Oh my gosh. I need to sleep early today. I'm asleep. Good to see Mr. Garadub's Medal of Honor still proudly displayed on the wall. The inscription reads, For distinguished participation, if you remember. Yes, I remember, because I remember thinking even if I might stand a chance of picking up honors like that. Wouldn't know to look at me now, perhaps, but I had my devil may care days, you know? Devil may care? What did you get up to? There, there. Well, it's on the past now, of course, and best left there. Best not? I want to know now. What am I missing? What am I missing? That's your military uniform, isn't it, Mr. Garadab? Well, ceremonial garb, yes. Been hanging on the wall ever since my retirement bash. Not in active service now, you know. Doesn't mean much to me anymore. You could have the old thing if you wanted it. Well, it might suit Lord Van Zeke's, perhaps. An overly ostentatious outfit like this could be just what he needs. Very tactful, Mr. Sato. Very tactful indeed. Uh... There's a single apron drying on the enormous cannon-shaped clothes horse. Look! No, no, Mr. Nadhoro. That's a real cannon! I knew that. I was just testing you. Piece of history, ladders. Seen plenty of action on the battlefield, I can tell you. Now the old girl and I are just enjoying peace and quiet of retirement together. And, of course, it could come in handy if the enemy decide to launch an attack again. Is there a war going on that I don't know about? I wonder if that is just the same mask the Russian jury was her holding. <gasps> ah! You, you could be right! Wow, what if it is that same mouse? I feel like I missed some quality hangout time with a friend. We were just talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. And how I was so psyched to see Daredevil in there. And I hope that Daredevil and Spider-Man team up later, eventually. Now that Tony Stark is gone. Daredevil, Matt Murdock, could be his next mentor. Father figure. 
<laughs> oh, a copy of Rance magazine. The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes is being read all over London. Isn't that wonderful? Naturally, one asks oneself if such a singular detective could really exist. But having met the chap, it's undeniable. He's the most certainly singular. Singularly dangerous. That's genuine public opinion for you, Mr. Sato. Perhaps this should be reflected in the stories. Make no mistake, Mr. Naruhodo. I intend to snuff out the sort of public opinion we just heard, personally. I'm starting to see where Mr. Sholm's untainted reputation comes from now. Okay, so there really is nothing to... What am I supposed to do? Do I... Do I go back to Shamspear's room? Everyone calls me that at some point. But smoothies are delicious! For a sec, I thought you were gonna say you hoped Spider-Man and Daredevil would kiss. I mean... If they wanted to, they totally could. <laughs> But no, Peter Parker has MJ. At least in that world. Okay, I need to I need to look up where I need to go. Um let's see. Investigation time. Oh, okay. I did miss something. There is supposedly this thing. An envelope. That's what I missed. What's this? It looks like, uh, part of an envelope, I think. Yes, I think you may be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was open. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps. When you look around the room, there's no sign of a letter. Or the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there. Ah, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree. We'd better take this, just in case. Acronym your name. Okay. Smooth. Agent K. Smoothies are delicious. Way more delicious than pickle juice. Heck yes. Oh, you want me to acronym smoothie? Smooth moves on... On... <laughs> smooth moves. Oh, wait. No, I don't want to say on. Smooth moves... Outstanding ovation. There, there. <laughs> wow, I'm terrible at this. All I know for sure is I want to keep smooth moves. That's S and M. Smooth moves. Outstanding, outrageous, terrific. Hi, I'm eating. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible, but that's all I can come up with. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna examine this envelope now. Whoever opened the envelope didn't bother with a letter opener or scissors, did they? Yes, whoever opened it was clearly someone with an unrefined temperament. And judging from the angle of the rip here, the person in question must have been right-handed. Miss Sato. I think perhaps someone's been reading too much of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. You can never read too much of it, Mr. Naruhodo. Never! It's okay, JT. They can't all be winners. Oh, no. It's just... Like... Oh, man. I've been playing Wordle to, like, help me with words. Man. I am not good at words. <laughs> Most of the times I solve it on the fourth try. But today I guess it on the second. I'm a troll. Sorry. It's okay. I want to be better at acronyms. I want to I want to get better at spontaneous like here you go words like get my mind working faster. Okay, I also have to examine the teacup on the table. Wow, totally missed that. Ah, one of the teacups that Mr. Shamspear and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from them, Mr. Naruhodo. There's bit of poison inside. Not planning on drinking any. Don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shamspear's, and the other must be the cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. But Sosuke-san wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine them in more detail later. 
But we're taking stuff from a crime scene, so isn't that illegal? Okay. Now things are happening. Looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Uh oh. Inspector Gregson, back so soon. After I threw that little Japanese fellow into clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes' time, this place will be cordoned off by the guard. Oh, I see. Well, we'd better be leaving then. Poor Mr. Natsume must be feeling very low being back in a cell again so soon. I'm sure. We should probably go- Oh my god! <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> He's not dead. What's wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? Ah! Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player. That struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Now, how soundeth the next part? It is a tale, told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Turning into a Doctor Who episode. Oh my gosh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Walking Dead! The fellow isn't dead at all. What was that nonsense he was saying, though? Yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare. Yo, that was freaking terrifying. Holy crap. Because, oh, like, they were framed on that. They, they held the shot on that for a while. I was like, what? I was thinking it was weird that Suzato was like off to the left when she would normally be center, unless there were two characters on screen, but she was on the left so you could see the body. And I was like, eh, whatever. But then as I read the sentence, he slowly started to get up and I was like, oh my gosh. <gasps> wow. I hope you get followed by some angels. Uh, I don't, I don't want angels following me because then that would mean I'm close to death, no? So it was that the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, the transparent fired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to a nearby hospital for treatment. And Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime, whatever that now was. That was flippin' terrifying. Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation for Mr. Natsume. Arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shanspear did consume poison as we deduced. But was it an accident, attempted suicide, or attempted murder? Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. Suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than the night in the cells. Who is that dude? Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? He looks like he's trying to see into Sosaki-san's lodgings. That's not Sosaki-san's room, that's... Amspear's room. Something wrong, Mr. Nandohoda? Um, excuse me, could we have a word? Ah! Uh. Oh. He just ran off. 
I feel sure that I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Hmm. I do too, but I don't remember. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsume again. A good idea. Lunar steam sale is going on? Wow, he can go invisible. Oh man. Every time there's a steam sale, I'm like, maybe I should buy something, but I don't play... play steam games that much. The last steam game I played was a Tree of Savior or Undertale. I started Undertale, but I never finished it. Or was it Monster Prom? Hmm. Let's see. Any good game? I mean, I've been meaning to play Ori, but... Mm, but there's still so many other games I have to play. He's like the meme of that black kid with the peace sign. Oh! <laughs> I know what you're talking about. But who is that guy? Quite shady. There he is. Look, Mr. Nadahura. Mr. Natsume, have the police finished questioning you now? Look, student, Mr. Nadahura Esquire. Oh, yes. What is he? Tell me, is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess, you're talking about Mr. Sholmes. Highly recommend Under Hero on uh, Steam. I swear it's not as hard as Hollow Knight. <laughs> ah ha ha, Hollow Knight. Well, I still have a ton of other games to play, so I might as well just finish all the games I have now before I spend money on another game that I don't play for a long time and possibly forget that I have later. Oh, excuse me. Stardew? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid of starting Stardew and then just, like, dropping it. Because you have to keep up with it like you do with Animal Crossing, right? But I'm just, like... I'm having trouble keeping up with Animal Crossing. I don't think I could handle another, like, simulation type game. Does that game use, like, real life time? Or is it just, like, game time? So even if you don't play for, like, three days, it's just like, Oh, next day! Instead of like, hey, three actual days have passed. He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume, not a ghost. But, but it's diabolic deductions! They're not of this world! They've, they've, they've left me! Ah, cursed! I'm cursed, I tell you! Well, that sort of hurts. Credit where credit is due, Mr. Naruhodo. You were heavily involved in the deduction, too. Yes, um, moving on. We have some wonderful news! Oh? The victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again! Now, in the absolutely worst case, you could only be tried for attempted murder. That's great, isn't it, Mr. Matsuma? It's terrible! Oh! I'm stuck in the cell, suffering for some silly wrong end of the stick! Well, now that he's alive, like... We can question him. You did it, didn't you? Confess, you're a killer! Why the mustache? <laughs> Constant questions! Sorry to hear that. Arr, that selfish shyster! Make up your mind! Are you dead or alive? You're going to come back to life? Why bother dying? <laughs> Wickedly wishy-washy William! Billion. Well, it seems likely that Mr. Shantabee was never actually dead in the first place. Ah, oh, yes, that might make sense. I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. Our lively debate last night was much fun. I'd be sad to think it was our last. Oh. Oops. Uh, Mr. Natsume, does this mean that you did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamspear, didn't you? Game time, and you can do whatever you want. Uh, mine, fish, forge, and farm. Mmm, can you decorate your house? <laughs> With cute furniture? I'm not saying another word! I demand to have a lawyer present! Who do you think I am? 
Please, Mr. Natsume, we need to hear your side of the story. Ugh, why am I cursed like this? What happened? You can? Hmm. Uh, but another simulation type game. Another simulation game. Oh, that reminds me, I need to I need to grow my flowers. <laughs> uh what the heck? Weird message. Especially if you download a furniture mod. Mm. Can you tell- wait, did I read that? Can you tell us exactly what happened last night, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell. But, Mr. Nodhoro Esquire, I'm eternally grateful to you for helping me with that accursed case yesterday. The case that saw poor Miss being hospitalized after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe that was only yesterday. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. That evening, at past nine it must have been, I visited Mr. Shamspear. So, you did go to the victim's room then? As we feared. I didn't do anything wrong! I'd never been to his room before! It was the first time! Then what made you decide to go? We bumped into him when I arrived back at the house. We got chatting and it developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with what Mr. Garadab said, that the victim went out and came back after 8. We met again later that evening at around 9 or just after, when I took him uh, some nice tea I brewed as his gift. It was you who brought the tea that had clearly been drunk at the scene then. And, I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, were you? Uh, it has a huge mod library, and I mean huge. Yes, get married to have kids. There's, mad, uh, there's a mod that doubles the size of the map and adds way more villagers. If and adding more stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but again, I don't think I could take another simulation game. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet, who was the stronger? It was a delightful debate. Sure. Such a stimulating subject, Shakespeare! And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison into Mr. Shamspear's tea? No, never, not at all! Team Juliet won, that was me, and when I left his room, the flamboyant fellow was fighting fit, I swear it, categorically! First existence. Oh, Mr. Natsume, you say you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a cursed existence. Sure, I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now, and in that time I've learned that there that it's no place for me. It can be very tiring to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. There are foreigners everywhere I look wait, there that's all be. And they all stare at me. They all laugh! That's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room, I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember. And then, one week ago, I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why did you choose that place? It doesn't seem very comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money. It spoke to me. The rents? Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. We talked about this last game. We don't have to reiterate it again. They have a mod that gives all the lady big bazangas. I mean, giant ganhonkaroos. <laughs> Smoothie, avert your eyes. Wait, what else does Game Grub say? They're like, big ganhonkaroos, and I mean giant... Oh man. I love just re-watching Game Grumps videos. It's nice, like, background noise to have. And I appreciate that they have a lot of, like, compilations of their best moments of, like, big games, like Doki Doki Literature Club, Undertale, um, just all their big series, Zelda, Mario. Because then I get to relive the whole- I re get to relive the game, but you don't have to watch every single episode. 
Like, I just recently listened to their compilation of um, Pokemon Fire Red. And it's funny. It's great. But you don't have to, like, sit and wait through all the battles and slog through everything else. I appreciate that about them. And their conversations and jokes are funny. First, Kristau! The previous occupant, the man who lived there before I took the room, died there. Oh no. He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead and no one could explain why. Surely no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. Their super bunny men comp always kills me. Oh yes, that too. And their um... Oh, what was the, what was the hand holding game? Or grab my hand. Grab my hand. Like toss the coin. <laughs> what? What's that game called? I don't remember. But that's all. That's fun too. I didn't. When the letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. But I want books, and books cost money. A horrible history is a small price to pay. Among Us? No, it wasn't Among Us. Grab my hands. Oh man, but their Among Us one is good when um Danny is the imposter. But it's only like Danny, Mark, and Susie left. <laughs> and they're like accusing each other and Dan's just like, I don't know, I don't know who to pick. But he does know who to pick, because he's the imposter. That, that was so great. When I realized it would mean I could buy more books, I signed the lease like lightning. Brave or blinkered. But after I moved in, I soon came to realize what I'd done. I realized how horrible that room is. History really was. Gosh, was it really so awful? Oh, maybe that's why that dude in the yellow jacket was waiting outside the window. Because he was waiting for the previous resident, or did he know the previous resident died? Maybe he was trying to get something out from that room? I don't know. How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsume? What happens? At, at first, it was just a feeling. A feeling of beady eyes pouring into my back, watching me. Do you think that might just have been your mind playing tricks on you? No, no, no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been one long nightmare ever since I was given the keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? Oh, all the souls of who d died in that room lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me. That really is horrible. And now I come to think of it, it happened again last night too. Every same night that Mr. Shamspear was writhing in agony from the poison, writhing in agony from the poison in his body, I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You simply must move out of that room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. I know it, and that's why I'm already searching for the next room with the history to call home. I think perhaps you should try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Eve Ho! Yes, that's the hand-holding game. That's it. I was like, it starts with a H, but I didn't remember what it was called. I was like, hand-hold? No. Otherwise, I'm scared that you yourself may become history. Ooh, Susan knows how to make the man listen. Of course. Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Mr. Garadab? Yes, he knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to run it out again. Well, that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. Ah, huh. perhaps. That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean, because he's worried about their well-being? He does seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such close tabs on the occupants of his let rooms. What do you mean, he pays so much attention to the gas lamp? Oh dear! No, it's nothing to do with you, Mr. Matsume! Please, forget I said anything! Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. What's important is that Mr. Shamsphere isn't, in fact, dead at all. Once he's come around and he's able to tell us what happened, we'll be able to get you released. Yes, please! Oh, I do hope you're right. Um, excuse me. Oh, it's you. Inspector Gregson. 
can't help overhearing what you just said. And on that note, I have some good news and some bad news. Oh? What do you want first? Always, every time, the bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Right, well, in that case, the good news it is. Huh? Sorry, but it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. Then why did you ask me my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamsphere, was just unconscious. He's come around now. Yes, we saw it happen. You know, it's terrifying glory. He's still being treated by doctors, but we've managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsume? Oh, thank goodness. It's all over then. I can leave this somber cell. Sorry, no, that's not on the cards. What? Why have I not, Inspector? Mr. Shamspear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh dear! You... you don't mean... Sorry to say I do, yes. Pointed the finger at you, Mr. Natsume. Arrgh! By sweet poison did he seek it to end my life. Ah, what a caitiff? Ah, cave, yeah. Close like enough, man. No! I'm afraid you'll be appearing in court as planned. We'll be wanting to make the necessary preparations. What is Shamspear hiding? I think he wants to try to pinpoint some. It's strange because Soseki said that Shamspear never invited him to his room before. But all of a sudden, last night, they get into a debate and they talk in his room, and then Sham Spear goes out and then comes back in again. He's trying. I think he's trying to frame something on Natsume, just because he's like, "Oh no, I don't want to get in trouble." <laughs> jelly Toasty Toast. Jelly Empire literally lets you talk on stream. Thank you. Toast owns every second. <laughs> Thank you for the acronym, Smooth. <laughs> no! And so, once again, Soseki-san found himself having to take the dock in the old bailey. Whether his room was haunted or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I would represent him in court and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. Be continued? Yeah. It took me 35 minutes. See? Acronyms are hard, especially when you like want to think of them on the spot and have them like kind of make sense. Um I what is this? Stream schedule and countdown. Oh, I don't want that. Oh. I don't want to start the court right now. Or do I? Hmm. The why messed me up. <laughs> because, I mean, you could just think of nonsense words, but then th it wouldn't be as fun. You need to make it a coherent sentence, and that's what makes acronyms cool. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to start the trial right now. Um... I kind of want to keep like investigations to one episode and trials to one one episode or like you know one or two episodes um but I think I got a decent yeah I streamed for an hour and a half now so I think that's good enough so next time I stream I will do the uh trial what do we do now I could either end stream early or we could try playing a round of Jackbox, because my new capture card seems to be uh, more instant. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to end the recording for Great Ace Attorney here, at least. Whew, 